Hey y'all, this is Ketzer. Gonna open up a new Dark Tidings deck for you. And let's just jump into that and see what we got going on. Sorry if there's some popping on the microphone. I don't have a great setup for doing this exactly. Ooh, yes. Purple's my favorite color, and I love the purple archons. And. Unfathomable is one of the more exciting sets or houses for me to open up in this set. Dutzion the Shaman. I like that name, Dutzion. It's got a nice little shaman shamanic look to it. Yeah, I could see I could see a lot of cool interpretations from each house here. Yeah. Got some alien vibes for Star Alliance, some shaman tones with like a skull robe for the untamed and then the unfathomable it's like squiddy maybe a jellyfish all right let's pop this open and see what we got going on all right and take off two bottom cards Set this aside and flip over and see what we got for our first house. Star Alliance. Commander Dirk's Scar. After an upgrade is attached to Commander Dirk's Scar or one of its neighbors, gain one. Um, I've had a lot of upgrade decks, a lot of upgrade heavy decks. I don't think I've ever had a Commander Dirk's Scar. So I'm really hoping for a lot more upgrades. Matter maker play upgrades as if they belong to the active house. All right, we're off to a deadly start already. Star Alliance caring about its upgrades like I love to see. Force field, first upgrade. All right, Teresa, second upgrade. And I believe if you play Teresa as a creature um, and you have matter maker, you can use her on you know either of your other houses. Uh, to play her in that way. Biome Discovery. Nice for raising the tide or, um, you know, looking at the top cards of your deck. It's really good if you have something like Book of LEQ uh, and, and something that makes the top card matter, or if your opponent has something like um, Gambling Den, for example. Um, and I didn't go over, but uh, Matter Maker. You know, lets you play upgrades on any turn. Force field gives a creature reap, ward the creature. Teresa can be used uh, as as the house of either of her neighbors, or she can be played as an upgrade to bestow that kind of ability to the creature that she's an upgrade for. Another biome discovery. It's more amber, more tide control, and more predicting the future. Third biome discovery. You're going to be able to tell what's coming down the line, hopefully. Um, you could see some more creatures or upgrades. That would be pretty cool. See our Officer Hawkins. Uh, comes in wherever he wants to and gets an Amber for each of the non-Star Alliance neighbors he has. So, so far a lot of value uh, as far as Amber Pips go in Star Alliance house. Lieutenant Valmar, our first little bit of Amber control against the opponent. Shield you later, another upgrade, or a creature if you don't have any creatures to play the upgrades. Um, sometimes sometimes you can uh, play them as an upgrade, then bounce them back or you know hold on to them. And if the creature you were putting upgrades on gets taken out, then you have an upgrade that you can you can toss in there in its place. Another one. Okay, uh, if you have a, uh, an opponent who knows what they're doing, they're going to see all of this and they're never gonna let this guy live but as long as he does you're, you're pretty good uh so techno battle stun a creature and each of its neighbors that shares a house with it that's good that'll that'll help you slow things down and it's got another amber pip so uh so far you're getting a lot of amber value in in this house a lot of burstiness 
Um, shield you later. Uh, has two armor and it can be played as an upgrade to give your your creatures two armor as well. So definitely a support house as well as a burst house going on here. But a lot of those, it's good that there's a matter maker because a lot of these are not going to be played on your turn. Um, you've got a total of one, two, uh, three, four upgrades that you can play and you can play those on any turn and possibly get amber value out of them so that's that's four cards that you can just throw down whenever if you've got your matter maker and that's going to help you speed things along quite nicely going on to unfathomable we got corrode you can destroy an artifact an upgrade or a creature with armor so that's really sneaky to uh combo this with your shield you later throw it on enemy creature during your unfathomable turn and then just corrode it right on the spot artifact control is also really nice uh so that could that could help out the abyssal zealot after you raise the tide capture two if your opponent raises the tide you move two from the abyssal zealot to the common supply um yeah so having those biome discoveries this guy just if this guy's just sitting out there that's gonna capture a lot of amber and if your opponent wants to take it back they have to take him out first or or just risk risk it being gone to the to the to the abyss Cyphos hazard is four and if the tide is high when it's destroyed you archive the Cyphos um, put some upgrades on that guy and your opponent's not gonna want to destroy it <laughs> Or it will, but you'll get it back. I, I don't really know how useful keeping that in the archives is going to be, but we'll see. Brain Drain. This is a really good card. Uh, knowledge is power, and knowing what your opponent has can really help you play around certain things. With the biome discoveries, knowing what you're about to have uh, is going to help you play around certain things. Let's see if we get more of these Brain Drains. That'd be really fantastic. Nope. Okay, Call of the Void. Exhaust a creature, but if it was already exhausted, destroy it, and its controller will lose one. Unfathomable's got a lot of exhausty things in this set. Uh, haven't seen anything else so far, but if we do, that'll be a great combo, so we'll look out for that. After your opponent raises the tide, enrage the Flame Gill Enforcer, but it has action capture three, and it's got six, six power. So it's not a bad card. Um, it'll be not too bad to fight with if you have some uh, some some armor on it or something of, of that nature. Hookmaster, we got another. We got a fight. Uh, if your tide is high, your opponent loses two. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's probably pretty good. Uh, the fact that it already has some armor lets it fight off a little bit. And fighting in this set is actually something that you want to do every now and then. Or maybe quite often, uh, depending on what your opponents are going with. But it's, it's, it's a lot more central to the strategy than it w that has been in the past. Moving on, we got a Horde Sinon. It's got Poison. Uh, I'm a big fan of Poison, as some people might know. And, you know, it's, uh, it's another one of those things that you can slap upgrades onto. Your opponent doesn't really want to fight into it, but if they have to, they have to, because you might be, holding, might be holding some amber. Maelstrom. All right. Put each creep, tre creature on top of its owner deck in a random order. Gain two chains. This one can be pretty devastating. Uh... If, if, you're the, if your deck is the kind that wants to play a lot of creatures, um, if you really rely on having those out there to hold a board to get the value out of your deck, Maelstrom can be a card that completely wrecks your game. So it's a nice tool to have, but it's kind of a sour thing to, to go up against. Portal. If the tide is high, you can archive Portal, but otherwise you raise the tide. A lot of a lot of stuff here in the unfathomable uh, wants you to have a high tide or you know raise the tide. So this is a nice one to have. And if your opponent isn't 
trying to keep it from you, then it's just value every time you call Unfathomable. Recusal's Chant. Exhaust a creature if the tide is high. Exhaust each creature instead. This one uh, can combo pretty well with Call of the Void. It can essentially give you uh, a, free, a free kill on anything that's not warded. Um, and then if something is warded, you could use that kind of combo to, to pull its ward off if you're trying to maelstrom it. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of cool combos that you can do here. Uh, nice to see more Amber Pips going on. Sink or Swim. This will be our last infallible card. It's a choose one. Your opponent discards a random card from their hand, or you exhaust a creature in each of its neighbors. Uh, this can this can combo pretty well with the brain drain. If you see something that you know you put something back on top, and then there's something else that you might want to try to get, or you can exhaust their creatures for you know like the call of the void. All right, moving on to the untamed. Let's see what they bring to the table. So far we got Star Alliance rocking a lot of upgrade power, a lot of telling the future. We got Unfathomable being their usual uh, disruptive cells. I like to think of the kind of disruption that Unfathomable does as, as uh, drowning your opponents, making them really struggle to tread water. Bumblebird, it's an alpha card and not doesn't feel too great when it comes in pairs, but the plus two power plus the two plus one power counters that it gives to your other untamed creatures could be really nice in this set. We got a growth surge, uh, which is kind of just a gorged out bumblebird. So it's nice to see that we only got one bumblebird, but the other one that comes is an action card instead. It doesn't have alpha. This one will give you. Uh, three plus one power counters on a flint creature and then two and one kind of going in from the side so that one's really fun to use uh kanga fan all right so we've got a lot of amber pips in the deck so far and if kirkar can stay alive we've got even better ways to make amber with like throwing all the upgrades down so reaping isn't going to be super important for us uh this is an action uh, Horde Simon's got poison. This guy fights. You know, Siphos also has. No, that's got Aspis. So, but we got a lot of fun things here to do other than reaping. So, having Kanga Fane out is not a huge deal for us. Because uh, it makes creatures die when they reap, if I didn't say that. <laughs> Cholonia gives us some extra burstiness doesn't work well with the Bumblebird because, you know, you can't play them both out on the same turn and get the value from the Chelonia, but you also can't play, get the value from the Bumblebird onto the Chelonia, so they gotta come two separate turns. Not greatly efficient, but, you know, that's how they, how they come out sometimes. More Amber Piffs with the deep water grew in. All right. You know, if you don't have the Tide, you don't want to reap with that anyway, so Kanga Fant still Still holding solid here. Molly Mock will let you destroy an upgrade, or sorry, let you destroy an artifact. Not great if the only artifact is your matter maker, um, but you know if you're in a situation where all of your upgrades have been played out already, um, maybe you can get rid of the matter maker and it doesn't matter because uh, it'll it'll come back. We got a Mookling. Mookling loves the the power counters that can come off of. The, the two Bumblebird cards because it makes your opponents uh, pay more for their keys uh, depending on how strong it is. They get uh, taxed by the amount of Mookling's power. Reaper So gives you ready and reap with a friendly creature and, or it gives three plus one power counters to uh, a creature that you choose. That'll probably pretty much be the Mookling pretty often but I could see I could see some interesting combos depending on what else we get in here. We got four more cards to go. Another reap or so. Third reap or so. Fourth reap or so. Okay. And then last but not least, another upgrade, Way of the Pixie. Uh, that's pretty great. So, cool combo that you could have here on 
pretty much whatever turn you want to, is throwing down the Teresa and the Way of the Pixie onto the same creature so that you can reap with it instantly um, and get extra value off of it. And then the Reapers, the, the four Reaper Sows with Way of the Pixie, you know, provided you don't have the Kangafan app, maybe they'll just throw it away if this is the case, but you can get four reaps off of a creature that gets two amber for reaping, essentially. And yeah, that's a that's a lot. Uh, a key frog would have been really great to see because um, a key frog you could have reaped, you could have burst really crazy with the untamed here, and then played your Kangafant Reaper so on the key frog to destroy it on your turn. But um, you know, this deck is what it is, and it's got its own little strategy going on. Let's see how many creatures it has, because I'm not sure it has a ton. We got Kirkar, Teresa. We got the two shield ulators. We got Lieutenant Valmart. And we got CR Officer Hawkins. So for star lines, we have three to six. Let's just say uh, six for now. In Unfathomable, we have the Abyssal Zealot, the Psychos, the Flame Deal Enforcer. We got the Hookmaster, the Horrid Sidon. So that's, I believe, five. So far, looking at a total of 11 creatures. And over here, we got Bumblebird, Kangafant, Chelonia, Mollymock, Deepwater Gruen, and Mookling. So we got six. Um, it's good to have a lot of creatures with that Chelonia, because that'll give us some nice burst. And yeah, most mostly burst over here, mostly burst over here, and slowing down your opponents with the unfathomable. Um, you're getting a little bit of speed out of your uh, out of your Star Alliance package over here if you have things set up in the right way. And there's a little bit to tax your opponent, and a little bit to take away, but not a ton. Um, you pretty much you have uh, Lieutenant Valmart and your Mookling to you know, raise raise their key costs and make them pay more. Um, other than that, these these two houses don't have any amber control, so you're looking at those two creatures staying alive uh, to make your opponents pay more. And then for your Unfathomable, you might take one off with Call of the Void. You might capture some with Flame Gale Enforcer. And you might uh, you might make them lose some with these two. So a de decent amount, I guess, of, of Amber Control and Unfathomable. Maybe not enough to make up for it a ton, so you're, you're going to want to rely on this burstiness that you get coming in, in the other two houses so you can kind of seal the deal pretty quickly. Uh, but this is a cool deck, you know? I like, I like Matter Maker a lot. It's a really fun card that helps you uh, have a lot of flexibility on your turns, and it lets you move through your hands pretty quickly. The three biome discoveries and the, th the four reaper sows, I think, are going to make this deck feel pretty consistent in what you're seeing and what it does. Um, and I'm interested to see how all of this comes together. So, uh... You know, I guess because this is going to be a video, comment below, tell me what you think. I'm probably misanalyzing some things. Uh, it's been a bit of a long day for me. But, you know, thanks for tuning in and stopping by. Uh, I'll see you guys out there somewhere in the wild on the Crucible.